Morgan's blood, my children! I really enjoy these annual chances to think about revenge from beyond the grave. So let's see what happens when the latest back to life meets someone who is actually repentant. Michael and Jan Corby are driving on their way to their honeymoon, taking a whole freaking page to talk about how happy they are to be married and how marriage is so wonderful and they're so happy and how nothing terrible could possibly happen to them. Honestly, it'd probably be a bigger twist if it turned out these two actually killed someone else who ended up resurrected by the board. But no, two carjackers attack their just-married car and rip the two from it. One of the two, Eric, is more aggressive than the other, especially when Jan bites his arm. In his anger, he shoots Jan dead. The other, Daryl, in his panic, shoots Michael, and the two drive off in the stolen car, leaving the newlyweds to die. Before we get back to the murder and mayhem, it's story time with the crows! Ever wonder why the crows try to put the wrong things right? The myth is also about why crows are black. Originally, a white crow was left by the god Apollo to watch over his wife Coronis. When Coronis admitted her infidelity with another man, though the child was still Apollo's, Apollo unleashed a fiery revenge against Coronis. The crow caught in the fire and burnt black. They have been spirits of revenge ever since. Coronis' child survived, named Asclepius, and became a great healer, using the blood of Medusa to cure the sick and raise the dead, which the crows have been using ever since to bring back those who need to put the wrong things right. And it is said among the crows that they shall remain black as long as violence is repaid with violence. Which, considering they could just stop bringing people back then that they prefer the gothier color scheme. Michael Corby is returned to life 15 years later. The crow who brought him back is actually named this time Hugo and brings him to a library to learn what happened after his death. It seems that Daryl was caught by the police and sentenced to 15 years for the murder. Like last year's Crow Resurrection implies that he just wants justice, but this time around Hugo points out that justice is a concept for the living. The dead only understand revenge, and his only hope to see Jan again is to take that revenge. And so he hunts down Daryl and Eric. Ah, but here's where we get a twist on things, my children. You see, Daryl has not been idle for those 15 years in prison. He has tried his best to become a better person. Especially thanks to nightmares about Michael rising from the grave to take his vengeance out on him. And indeed, after he gets out of prison, reuniting happily with his family, he goes out for a drive with Eric. Who ends up quickly killed when Michael attacks? But all Daryl can do is ask for forgiveness. He knows he would have seen him sooner or later, either in this life or the next. And of course, while he can ask for forgiveness, there is no sacrifice he can make that will appease the god of vengeance who resurrected him. Michael does let him go, but only because he wants Daryl to be afraid when he does it. A police officer, Detective Jacobs, investigates all this and realizes that somehow Michael is alive, well dead, and hunting Daryl down. They struggle, Michael suggesting that the cop is really no different than the criminals, answering all their problems with violence. But before that debate can be got into, Daryl sacrifices himself, pointing out that he's the one that Michael wants. His blood is on his hands after all. By this point, Michael just wants this to end. He doesn't know if there really is a difference between revenge and justice anymore. But as Daryl says, there may not be a difference in this life, but maybe in the next one. And while Michael may never be able to forgive Daryl for what he did, Daryl forgives Michael for what he must do. And his neck gets snapped! Michael finally collapsing as the Gorgon blood exits his vines. That night, Detective Jacobs has a dream of Hugo the Crow and his new white feathers. And as he peers at Daryl appearing in the rain as well, even Hugo must wonder, since the crows will only remain black as long as violence is repaid with violence, is this the end or a new beginning? Well, considering there are still more tales of the crow out there, I'm guessing it's not truly the end. 